Broncos come home to play the biggest game in UH history. The chance to lock up the WAC championship against Brigham Young University. On national television, the defense nullifies the record-breaking passing of Jim McMahon. But all the bounces go to the Cougars as the defending champions win a close game 13 to 3. After being eliminated from a chance at the Holiday Bowl, the Rainbows run into a hungry Tiger, the University of the Pacific. Hawaii suffers its second loss in a game that goes to the wire. UOP 23, Hawaii 17. track against winless Colorado State, scoring 45 points in the first half for another school record. They pick up their eighth win, skinning the Rams 59 to 6, and secure a second place finish in the WAC, one half game behind champion BYU. Tommy had just been selected WAC Coach of the Year, and the Bulls treat him to a 33-10 victory over the Gamecocks, punctuating his most successful season. The Rainbows finished second in the Western Athletic Conference with a 9-2 season record, the best record Hawaii has had as a Division I colleague.
Warriors 1981 have not only continued the winning tradition of the University of Hawaii football program, but have reached new horizons for rainbow football in the years to come by attracting more national attention and recognition than any team before them. Five years. Dick, the Bows have reached a new plateau, a new era of football at the university. Well, certainly this team did. Uh, I take it took us into a national prominence, uh, gave us a lot of good national publicity, and certainly something that will give our program more and more exposure. But every team after this has got to establish itself on its own merits. But I think this team has certainly, and this group of seniors has certainly a lot to be proud of. And those seniors are rewarded at the awards banquet. Coming up is one of our highlights right after this. A 1981 Chevette for only 4513. A 1981 Citation for only 6495. A Chevy Love truck for only 5995. The lowest price ever on these 1981 models. Come in now to Waipahu Auto and Service Motors Wahiawa. That's a Chevette for 4513. A Citation for 6495. A Chevy Love truck for 5995. You've never seen this price before on America's hottest selling cars at Waipahu Auto and Service Motors Wahiawa. Boy, this job gets tougher every year. Let's break for a bit. <sighs> oh, Lee. Hey, Lou, where do you think they get that pure artesian pooling water that makes Ole taste so good? From the artesians. Artesians? Anybody who believes in artesians probably still believes in... Oh, oh, oh. Uh-oh, hide the beer. The boss is coming. <laughs> People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly. Like your season of virtual sellout. It was a star-spangled affair, and the players seemed to get, take a great deal of delight in everything that went on. Well, I think the, the big reason for a banquet is to honor those that deserve to be honored and uh, have some fun and, uh, and also get yourself ready for the next season. Well, it was a fun affair, and we're going to show highlights of it right now. Last Sunday's awards banquet. We will start with the awards with the four-year award winners. These are people that have won letters for four years. The first four-year award winner is someone who you will hear a lot about this evening. As I, as I look at it from where I stand, uh, the greatest football player in the history of the University of Hawaii, Gary Allen. The second athlete Four-year letter award winner, Keith I. Ewan. Next, a four-year letter award winner at tight end, Dave Barbour. Next, four-year letter award winner, Tony Holyfield. Next, four-year letter award winner, Dana McLemore. Next, four-year letter award winner, Andy Moody. Next, four-year letter award winner, Verlon Red. Next, four-year letter award winner, Marcus Tarver. Next, four-year letter award winner, David Tolaumu. <laughs> Lastly, someone that... Uh, I think I feel a special kinship to. He's been here five years. Or Samari Ulafali. All right, let's give these guys a big hand. Next, uh, we have a very coveted award. Some awards that we have are objective and some are subjective. Some are elected by the coaching staff. Some are elected by the players. The captain's awards are elected by the squad. The squad elected all these people very unanimously. The offensive captain for this year, the offensive captain, Gary Allen. I just want to say thank you, and uh, <laughs> I want to say thanks to all the people for, you know, just giving us your support, and uh, all the fellas for voting me the captain, and uh, uh, thanks to my mother and father, you know, coming down and supporting me. I just want to say thank you. <laughs> All 
Our defensive captain, again, very unanimous, somebody that made all Western Athletic Conference as a sophomore, again as a senior, I think had his best year, um, has an opportunity, I think, to be a, uh, a professional football player, as a lot of these guys do, a guy who I think, when it really counted, played some great football for us this year and meant a lot in the leadership area, Dana McLemore. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, players for voting me defensive captain for this year. Thank the, the athletic department, thank the coaches, and I uh, hope the Rainbows keep having a winning season. And my favorite coach, John Wilbur. Thank you. Next, uh, an athlete that has not been up here, an athlete that walked on at the University of Hawaii, worked hard, developed himself from someone who athletically was not really what you're looking for as a major college football player into somebody that was exactly what you're looking for and all the time had all the intangible mental characteristics that you want to be a great football player, Doug Kyle. I'd like to thank all my coaches, Coach uh, Lumpkin, Coach K, uh, Coach uh, Wilbur, and especially Coach Tomey for motivating me to do things that I thought I never could do before. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, especially my girlfriend and my future wife, Zena McCollum. This year is the most unanimous that this award has ever been in its history. I'm sure this will come as no surprise, and I would like as the recipient and his parents who are here to come up and receive the award. This award is given to Gary Allen. The first one was rough. This one's really rough. Um, I just want to thank everybody once again for just, you know, respecting me so much to give me this award. Special thanks to my mother and father for coming out every year since I've been here and giving me their support. Coach Tommy for being so wonderful. Coach Drawlin for being my, my buddy and my coach. And we still got something going, buddy. <laughs> coach Kazarian, just the whole coaching staff, Coach Rita, Coach Lumpkin. Monkey Bloods, <laughs> got to thank them. And uh, for the one that's still got another year, he's got to come back. And Max over there, I got to thank him. I just want to thank everybody and uh, for the rainbows, you know, continue to, to win and uh, strive. And next year, y'all going to get it. Take it all the way. Get out, Bulls.
play. Well, Les, I think that, the, as I told the squad the other day, the greatest legacy that a lot of these guys leave is uh, uh, Gary Allen leaves the legacy of, of how he practiced to the rest of the guys. Uh, to look back on, and this will be something we can point to for years, uh, how a great player practiced the last week of his senior year, the first week of his senior year, uh, how he competed, uh, Merv Lopes, how he improved himself from one day to the next very methodically and, and went from an athlete that had not even played much high school football to somebody that was very, very uh, outstanding wide receiver uh, and how he practiced and how he worked. And I think the greatest legacy that any player can give is something that lasts much longer than how good a player he was, something that people can remember him for uh, when they're practicing hard or when they go through difficult times or whatever. And a lot of our seniors can really, really be remembered for uh, things that they stood for or things that they did and the kind of people that they were more so than the kind of athletes that they were. You know, when you think of the seniors that are leaving you, you have some mighty big shoes to fill next year. Well, I don't even want to think about it. This next piece, I'm not going to watch this. I'm going to leave the studio because it, it's a great group of guys. It's a group of people that uh, probably meant more to this program than any other group of seniors in the history of this program because they've taken it from where it was four years ago to where it is now and some people that we will always have very fond memories of. And here's a parade of those memories, our senior Aloha.
a segment I've been looking forward to because you're going to become a seer. You're going to look at 13 bowl games and make your selections. And speaking of bowl games, the, I think the one big disappointment the Bows had in 1981 that they're not in one of these bowl games. Well, I think we certainly should be. I think we're a better football team than a lot of teams that are in these games. Uh, I think, you know, after South Carolina game, I really felt that, hey, we should be in the top 20 because South Carolina competed very favorably against some of those teams that were. Uh, and I think we were a much better team than they were. And uh, I think it's an indication of uh, the strength of the 1981 football team. And hopefully we'll have a chance to get in the, in the polls after the January 1 bowl games. Uh, but this segment, I don't think anybody should take this too seriously because uh, uh, my ability to predict is certainly uh, nothing to write home about. And if anybody bets anything on my predictions, uh, they're taking a real shot in the dark. All right, are you ready? These are Dick's picks. First game. Well, BYU and Washington State, I think uh, this is a real good matchup. Washington State's an option team that has played uh, very good defense this year. They've really come on this year. Jim Walden was a Pac-10 coach of the year. He did a great job. Uh, BYU, of course, has Jim McMahon, the best quarterback in the nation and the one who's been all-American on most of the teams so far. And I would have to pick BYU just on the strength of McMahon being able to somehow get the job done uh, down the wire. The Tangerine Bowl in Orlando, Florida, Southern Mississippi and Missouri. Southern Mississippi, I think, a team that has come on somewhat like Hawaii, I think, and has uh, come into the forefront in college football just in recent years. We played them here five years ago and had a great ball game with them. This past year, they tied Alabama, Missouri from the rugged Big 8 Conference. I somehow think Southern Mississippi will win that game because they're a team and breaking into the bowl picture for the first time, and I just uh, don't think they'll let that go by the boards without winning that ball game. Oklahoma and Houston in the Sun Bowl. Oklahoma coming off what for them is a bad year, uh, but they have a good football team, but they just lost some key ball games, and they play a very difficult schedule. Playing against a Houston team that was in the middle of pack in the Southwest Conference, and again, I think that Oklahoma, uh, even though they did not have a great season, will win that ball game just on superior personnel. The Gator Bowl in Jacksonville, Florida, the 28th of December, North Carolina against Arkansas. I think this is a real good matchup. North Carolina from the Atlantic Coast Conference. We saw a lot of film of them. We were getting ready to play South Carolina against Arkansas, a team that uh, last year had a real bad year but came back this year to post a good 8-3 and three season. Uh, I feel like North Carolina has too much defense for Arkansas in that game. Uh, the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, so Ohio State against Navy. Navy uh, tied Army in the last ball game. Ohio State uh, co-Big Ten champion, I believe, uh, after beating Michigan in the last ball game. I think Ohio State will win that game. Uh, has way superior personnel to Navy. The Hall of Fame Bowl, one of the new bowls in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, Mississippi State against Kansas. My friend Don Fambro from Kansas has done a great job of bringing Jayhawks back from a uh, point where they really didn't have good personnel. Mississippi State is a team that has put together a lot of real good seasons. This year had a real fine 7-4 and four season. Uh, I kind of have a sentimental pick in this one. I can't possibly do anything but pick Kansas. I hope uh, Coach Van Brown and the Jayhawks win that one, and I think they will. The Peach Bowl in Atlanta, West Virginia, a team we beat here last year against Florida. Both teams had good seasons. Florida beat Florida State in that interstate rivalry to qualify for this game. Uh, both teams are very similar. Florida throws the ball a little bit more. West Virginia plays a little better defense. I like Florida in that game. The Blue Bonnet Bowl, uh, Michigan against UCLA. Uh, Michigan, my favorite coach, Bo Schembechler, the guy that I think has had most impact on me as a, as a coach against UCLA, where I have a lot of good friends. I think that'll be a heck of a ball game, but I, I just can't bet against Michigan because I think uh, coming off that Ohio State loss that they'll somehow find a way to win that one. The Fiesta Bowl in Tempe, Arizona, Penn State against USC. I think this will be one of the real fine bowl games. Uh, USC with Marcus Allen coming off a 9-2 and two season. Just lacked uh, playing one game of having enough wins to win the uh, Pac-10, just as we did in the WAC conference. They were 5-2. and two. They need to be 6-2. and two. Uh, I can't bet against the Trojans in a big game because they haven't lost many over the years. The Cotton Bowl in, in uh, Dallas, Texas against Alabama. Again, I think this will be a great ball game. Two real fine teams. Uh, Alabama under Coach Bryant, who has just... Uh, beaten uh, Stagg's record for most coaching victories uh, against a real good Texas team. But I think uh, Coach Bryant and Alabama will win that one. 
Iowa against Washington in a Rose Bowl. I think Iowa is a surprise of the, the Big Ten. Iowa played great defense this year, had some variety on offense. Washington lost a couple of times big in the Pac-10 race, but then came back to win the big games when they needed to against USC and Washington State. Uh, but I think Iowa, in their first trip to the Rose Bowl in a long time, uh, just because of the excitement, the adrenaline of being there for the first time, and the fact that they have a real good team will win that one. Miami, Florida, Orange Bowl, Nebraska against Clemson. I think this will be the most interesting bowl game of the lot. Nebraska, who I think may have the best team in the country against Clemson, who right now is number one, but has not played close to the schedule that Nebraska has. I think Nebraska will win that game, and, and there'll be a lot of support for Nebraska. Nebraska is one of the best teams in the country, if not the best, if they can pull that off. Uh, Pittsburgh against Georgia, uh, two real fine teams. Pittsburgh looked on the verge of a national championship year before they played Penn State, suffered through a, a real uh, difficult defeat there. But again, I believe that defeat will help Pittsburgh come through and, and possibly be able to beat Georgia this week, or this year in the uh, Sugar Bowl. There they are, Dick's picks. I've got them all marked down. We'll be back to wrap up the Dick Tomey Show for 1981 right after this. The season is now in the record books. And, Dick, as we look ahead to 1982, you open up against Long Beach State and you wind up against Nebraska. Looks to me like 82 is going to be somewhat interesting, too. Unless you just spoil my Christmas. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to let you or anybody else spoil Christmas. That, nobody can do that. I think uh, there are a lot of really warm things to think about with this football team and this football season. Uh, the team, the coaches, their families, uh, all the people in the community that enjoy our football team, I think, have a lot to think back on and really feel really good about. And I think we have a long off season to really reflect on those things and that that's what we should all do. Well, you've made the fall a wonderful season for all of us. Thanks to you and your team. And Dick, having you on the Dick Tomey Show here every Sunday has been a delight for me personally. It's been wonderful working with you, winning coach 1981. Well, thank you, Les. And a reminder that on this station, on the 29th of December at 7 p.m., a special show, Pressure with Class, the Dick Tomey story. For Dick, Les Kider saying so long for now. the net and bait your line, it's Into the Blue with Harry Kojic.